Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's address the elephant in the room. Because I made a video last week talking about how uh, the hedge funds, the hedges, the institutions were heavily shorting the small and mid cap stocks. And it's still continuing to happen. If you look at the one day relative performance, the small caps is down minus 1.39%. Again, getting heavily shorted by these institutions. If you look at mid caps, mid caps are also down. The best performance have been mega caps. And the same trend continues from the weekly relative performance to the monthly relative performance, all right? So it's just been the trend so far for the majority of this year. And I said that in that video, and the main backlash, or maybe I should say criticism I received was, oh, that's what you get for investing in small companies. That's what you get for investing in YouTube or retail investor companies. That's what you get for investing in mid cap size companies. You know, you should invest in Apple. You should invest in Facebook and Amazon and ETC. You know, all these trillion dollar companies. Okay. Now I used to do that and I made a decent amount of money. You can check back on some of my old videos. I invested heavily in Facebook in Apple, Amazon. I had all of that. But this book single-handedly changed my whole investing philosophy. 100 baggers, okay? And it opened my eyes to what I need to focus on if I want to see these exponential returns, okay? And as well as this segment here, I'm also going to play a video from Warren Buffett explaining how to make a serious amount of money in this investing game, all right? But before we get into what Warren Buffett has to say, let's take a look at this segment here from 100 Baggers. So it says, so you must look forward to find 100 Baggers. You have to train your mind to look for ideas that could be big. To think about the size of a company now, versus what it could be this doesn't mean you have to have a huge market to address although that helps even a small company can become a 100 bagger by dominating a niche polaris was a 100 bagger and makes snowmobiles despite occasional exceptions you do want to focus on companies that have national or international markets and christopher mayer gave some examples such as comcast uh, adp and lockheed martin but the common denominator is that these companies came to dominate big spaces though they all started small okay these companies came to dominate big spaces though they all started small okay so why do i bring this up if you've been a subscriber on my channel you know the main companies i talk about here are tattooed chef palantir celsius holdings and a few other stocks but my main top three is tattooed chef palantir and celsius holdings now why do these three positions take up the large majority of my growth stock portfolio because number one they are small let's take a look at celsius holdings okay it has a market cap of 5.4 billion dollars all right so the, the company itself is small but look at the size of the industry it's in. The global energy drink sales reached $57.4 billion in 2020. The industry is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate by 7% between 2020 and 2025, okay? The growth is attributed to rising incomes and increase in sports activities and urbanization. Now, if you know anything about Celsius Holdings, we are just starting to take market share from the likes of Monster and Red Bull. I mean, heck, Monster actually addressed this in their recent earnings call. And let me pull up the transcript for you. So this is Monster's Q1 earnings call transcript, right? If we scroll down, uh, they referenced about Celsius taking Red Bull's market share so it said red bull sales increased 135.4 percent and its share was 13.7 percent down 1.4 points whereas celsius sales increased 265 percent and its share increased 4.5 points to 15.5 so Celsius is in an industry that is set to grow at an alarming rate of 7% CAGR over the next five years. They are taking market share from the market leaders and they're a small company. So Celsius has all of the ingredients to be a potential 100 bagger because we are in a large industry. We have a lot of space to dominate as we are now taking market share. They are still currently small, but they could be a giant in this industry okay that's just celsius let's take a look at palantir okay so palantir 42 billion dollar market cap you would consider that to be a mid cap stock you, you wouldn't really class palantir as a small cap neither a large cap because it's only 42 billion dollars but look at the industry it's in okay the global data analytics market size is to grow with a kega of 25 percent from 2021 to 2030 25 percent 
absolutely insane. But again, Palente has so much more to offer than just this. But the point is, they're in an industry that is growing at an alarming rate. It's still relatively small in comparison to the size of the industry, but they have a huge moat and they are widely regarded as the dominant figure within this space. So they have a huge space that they can grow into from where they are currently right now. And this is why Palantir is my second largest holding. Let's bring up Tattoo Chef, my baby, all right? Market cap is only $1.67 billion, okay? Let's take a look at the size of the plant-based food industry, okay? That's expected to grow at a CAGR of 11.9% from 2020 to 2027 to reach $74.2 billion by 2027. Again, Tattoo Chef right now is a, it's a small fish. It's a small fish in a large ocean, but it's a small fish that is executing and starting to dominate. If you look at the list for the top 100 retailers for 2021, okay, you have Walmart's. Tattoo Chef, we're already in Walmart. You have Amazon. Amazon owns Whole Foods. Tattoo Chef is now available in Whole Foods nationwide. So we're technically on Amazon. And yesterday, the company announced that we're in Kroger. And Kroger is the third largest national retailer. So you've got Tattoo Chef with a market cap of 1.6 billion, right? In an industry that is growing at double digit rates. And again, it falls in line with the criteria to be a potential 100 bagger in the long term. I'm not talking about in the next five years. I'm talking about the next 10, 15, possibly even 20 years. All right. Now, with these potential exponential returns, it comes at a cost. OK, nothing comes free. And this is from the psychology of money. Right. It says, like everything else worthwhile, successful investing demands a price. OK, so if I want long term, so if I want exponential returns in the likes of Tattooed Chef, Celsius, Palantir, it's going to come at a price. OK, but its currency is not dollars and cents. It's volatility, fear, doubt, uncertainty and regret. The inability to recognize that investing has a price can tempt us to try to get something for nothing, okay? So in order for me to have long-term success, especially the type of success that I believe I can have with the likes of Tattooed Chef, Palantir and Celsius, volatility is the price I'm going to pay. And Tattooed Chef has been volatile as heck. Palantir, Palantir is another stock that has been volatile. There's been a lot of fear. There's been a lot of doubt. There's been a lot of uncertainty. Well, we pretty much call it FUD surrounding Palantir. It's the fee that needs to be paid. The exact same thing with Celsius Holdings. When they recently announced the share offering and we saw the share price tank from $80 to $60, this is a cost, okay? And I understand that volatility is a price I'm going to have to pay. Now, to show you that I'm not alone in this thinking and it's not just Christopher Meyer or Thomas W. Phelps or any of the other greats, let's listen to what Warren Buffett has to say before we wrap this video up. Mr. Buffett, how can I make $30 billion? Hmm. Start young. <laughs> Charlie's always said that the, the big thing about it is we building this little snowball on top of a very long hill. So we started at a very early age in rolling the snowball down. And of course, the snowball, the nature of compound interest is it behaves like a snowball of sticky snow. And the trick is to have a very long hill, which means either starting very young or living very to be very old. The... I, you know, I would do it exactly the same way if I were doing it in the investment world. I mean, if I were getting out of school today and I had $10,000 to invest, I'd, I'd start with the A's. I would start, I would start going right through companies and I, I probably would focus on smaller companies because I would be working with smaller sums and there's more chance that something is overlooked. But that's the only way to do it. I mean, you have to buy businesses. And you, or little pieces of businesses called stocks, and you have to buy them at attractive prices, and, and you have to buy them, in, you have to buy into good businesses, and that advice will be the same 100 years from now in terms of investing. That's that's what it's all about, and you can't expect anybody else to do it for you. I mean, the, uh, people will not, they will not tell you about uh, uh, wonderful little investments. There's, it's it's not the way the investment business is set up. When I first visited Geico in January of 1951, I, sub I went back to Columbia and I, that rest of that year, I subsequently went down to Blythe and Company and uh, actually to, um, to one other firm that was a leading, Geyer and Company, that was a leading analyst in insurance. And you know, I thought I'd discovered this wonderful thing and I'd see what these great investment houses that specialized in insurance stocks said. And they said, I, 
I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, they, they, it wasn't of any interest to them. You've got to follow your own. You know, you, you've got to learn what you what you know and what you don't know. And within the arena of what you know, you have to just you have to you have to pursue it very vigorously and and act on it when you find it. And you can't look around for people to agree with you. You can't look around for people to even know what you're talking about. You know, you have to you have to uh, you have to think for yourself. And if you do, you'll find things. All right, so there you go. I would advise you give this a watch. Uh, it's called Warren Buffett, How to Turn $10,000 into $30 Billion. And he laid all the gems there. He mentioned about having a long hill. And for me, I interpret that as being in an industry that has a long-term growth trajectory. He said it needs to be a small, good business and lastly he wrapped it up by saying that people will doubt you you know people will not understand and i think that's been the case with a few people in the comment section they just don't understand why i'm doing this okay this is why i'm doing this i'm looking for exponential returns i'm looking for exp exponential growth over the long period of time and like i mentioned i'm prepared to pay the price of volatility in order to see these type of returns and that's where i'm at with my investing journey all right so i hope that cleared up a few things i hope i've been able to address the elephant in the room uh, if you gained any value please make sure you smash the like button hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to see more content from me thank you so much for watching i appreciate your time and i'll catch you in the next one peace